Hey guys, this is Hazel Lucia Taro, and I'm here with a reading for you about your spiritual journey and how you're coming along. Um, we're going to be talking about exactly where you are, what you can do to advance it, maybe certain paths that you're opening that you may not be aware of. Um, but we have three piles here for you today. We have Dance of the Butterfly Queen, number five, with this crystal quartz turtle. Princess of the Autumn Harvest, number 22, with this soapstone owl. And Shining Lotus, 26, with a fluorite elephant. I'm not sure if you can see he's an elephant, but there he is. So take a moment to take a deep breath. Really focus on your spiritual journey and what you would like to know and understand about it. And I'll be ready for you whenever you are. All right, pile one. If you chose Dance of the Butterfly Queen and our cute little turtle here, we have your reading here for you. We're going to start with some oracles to see where exactly it is you are on your journey. And then I will read up about our little Kuan Yin card here in a minute. So to start off, we have Penguin, authentic. Reach out to your tribe in times of need. Family gives you strength when you face the storm. Love your unique uniqueness. You are full of surprises. Break free from others' expectations. Just be yourself. We have the heart chakra, compassion, forgiveness, gentleness. We have ap apocalypsis. Forge, don't follow. Have a new path. Be the leader you wish you had. And grateful optimism, joyous view of the future. These are all very beautiful cards and right away a lot of self-acceptance and a lot of self-love for you pile one i'm seeing a lot of green and blue so and purple as well um that indigo color between purple and blue that i just think is the most lovely color that would be actually third eye i would consider that throat chakra as well but when you get up in the chakras between the throat and the hot, the head it kind of all blends together, at least it does for me. Um, so you may be working a lot on these, but also kind of grounding these in the heart. Um, with the penguin here being authentic in the heart, I think you're learning how to be true to yourself and maybe learning a little bit more about... So yeah, you may be working on the heart chakra, really learning how to fully embrace yourself, not just on a road to self-love but also on a path to embrace who you truly are and this may be embracing not just the positive but also the negative sides of you um, really f learning how to love whenever it is that you become in your more in your dark energy and this isn't to say that you're going to be embracing the toxic traits or the negativity but more like appreciating the fact that you can set boundaries that you don't put up with certain that you don't put up with people pushing you around i feel like you're somebody who really is seeking balance here and if not a spirit is urging you to seek balance here just because i'm of the black and white that i'm getting from the penguins and the apocalypse with grateful optimism, you're probably somebody... This card always makes me think of somebody who's very happy-go-lucky, who's just always a very bright presence in the room. Maybe you're prone to be more on the positive side and really don't like it when you become negative, when you become pessimistic, or you know when you just start going down that path. So you try really hard to ignore it, but Spirit here is asking you to embrace it, even if it's for just a minute, to see if... Maybe there's some truth in there. Maybe there's something to gain from not always being positive because there is such thing as toxic positivity as well where you don't really take the time to look within yourself and see why exactly it is that you're feeling this way or to honor the fact that you are going through something that is difficult and you may feel angry. You may feel lost, abandoned. I'm just getting the sense of like you feel the world isn't fair but at the same time it's like you knew it but you don't understand why you're acting or you're feeling a certain way um, 
that's just part of what I'm getting with Apocalypses and Grateful Optimism. With Forge, don't follow. And it's always the, with the authentic card. You may have been let down by, by somebody you used to admire. And this could be like a spiritual leader or a guidance, like a guru. Somebody who you really looked up to that perhaps also pertained to how you view life and how you went about just your your everyday I'm, I'm thinking more spiritual but it could also be like you know just somebody you really admire whether it's a celebrity or maybe a speaker some a, an author or somebody like that who just is used to inspiring but perhaps something happened or you've gained a different perspective on this person and with doing this you're really being asked to to be your own inspiration, to be your own guide, to really look within yourself and know that you don't need anything outside to inspire the spiritual part of yourself, to inspire that connection to source. You don't need anybody to teach you how, well, maybe to teach you, but at the same time, I feel like it comes innately. It's more like you can go to people for tips on how to connect with source and how to connect with the universe to ask for what it is you want but really if we really quiet our minds and look within deep deep within ourselves we're able to understand this and i think a lot of us do we just don't trust it um we don't trust that we can do this ourselves when in truth is we can i'm get, i'm also getting that with the heart And forge don't follow it will benefit you to really find your own path here and to not follow the path of other people because what may have worked for them will not work for you we are all very different we, we're similar but we're also very different in the way we go about seeing the world setting our footprints and really just navigating our own lives even with people who are very similar you will always find small key differences and sometimes they make such a different impact. Um, I'm going to read The Dance of the Butterfly Queen from the Kuan Yin Oracle. Um, Kuan Yin is a very important deity to me. Um, I I was really looking for like a good archetypical goddess to just have as something to symbolize uh, the divine whenever I first started my journey and I looked to her just because there was just something very universal about her she's uh she's worshipped in a lot of east asia and asian cultures um but i've also seen her depicted as uh the uh, uh i guess mother mary uh, with the child um so that spoke to my background my catholic background a bit but um this is kuan yin and we're gonna see what the book has to say about her a pure heart and sincere love attracts divine grace. With the grace of Kuan Yin, Butterfly Queen, that which was impossible becomes possible. From caterpillar to winged creature of delight, you cannot restrain what divine grace ordains you, no matter how incredible it may seem to be. Whatever has been troubling you, or whatever has been inspiring you, allow grace to infuse the situation or dream, so that it may unfold with divine perfection. Allow the Butterfly Queen to dance, she will bring healing, and grace to your life situation now, beloved one, with lightness of step and grace in her heart. Yeah, I feel like you're being called to dance, your own dance here, and definitely allowing spirit to come through. Um, this is why you've been in your upper chakras, anything from the heart up, I feel is what you're developing. And this may have come because of a state of turmoil, especially getting this with apocalypses, maybe something had to come undone, whether that's a perspective, whether that's um, a connection with somebody, any sort of relationship, or even just things in your life. It's really asked you to stay within yourself and to look for that divine inspiration within because you have all the tools you need, Pile One. You have everything you could ask for. And I'm also noticing how there's light shining in all of these cards we have the these kind of look like the northern lights in this penguin and then the light here 
the light radiating here as well as within you're really being asked to shine your light from within and to expand it out to allow just all the good stuff to come into your life it starts with self-love and it expands from there this is really beautiful i'm also loving the colors i love greens and blues and purples just combined like this together um numbers before we move on we have a five and a one you may have been born may 1st um which is a really lucky i think it's may day in some cultures um so that's a really lucky <laughs> birth date if it happens to be or um january 5th which is i can't remember no it's january 6th that's the, the religious holiday but also considered a lucky birthday um we have five here as well so the two fives maybe five is an important number and then five plus one uh, in numerology reduces to six so you could be a life path six as well and if you are i am too i'm 33 uh number 33 and also age 33 um but it reduces down to six so whenever they don't have the 30 the number 33 for me to uh look into i have to go with six but or you may be a uh, a 55 as well. Anytime you have repeating numbers in your life path, um, they're considered master numbers and these are very auspicious. You tend to be more powerful than the average number. Not saying that you can't be if you aren't, but they're, they're just extra lucky. Thought I'd point that out. So we're going to be going into the tarot now. Um, we have, I'm going to use Tarot of the Divine because it's my favorite. You will see it a lot. And I'm going to go ahead and clarify with the Tarot of the Divine as well. I think I'm just going to have each pile have its own Tarot deck today. So, some advice of, and information on where they are on their spiritual journey for pile one. Oh, okay. <laughs> we have the Lovers, Seven of Coins, the Magician. The Hermit, oh wow. And Two of Coins, to clarify the lovers, we have a Queen of Wands, we have the Seven of Coins, King of Cups. For the Magician, we have Judgment. <laughs> and for the Hermit, Knight of Swords, Four, Two of Coins, Three of Swords, okay. So for some of you, this will happen, started by a relationship. Um, and it could be either you broke off a relationship and this forced you to focus on your heart, yourself, your self-love, or you've entered a relationship which forced you to also look at your self-love because I think it goes both ways. People can inspire you to love yourself even more um, because sometimes they, I know they say that if you can't love yourself, how can you love how can you love somebody else? I believe that to be true, but at the same time, sometimes we find the exact people that inspire us to love us the way they they love us, if that makes sense. Um, I get this a lot, especially from friends or from other people. I'll just have days when I am down, and maybe this will resonate with you, and I just do not feel great, and then they'll say something really wonderful about you, and suddenly you just, you feel the overwhelming love that comes into your heart from them and it's like oh wow somebody out here just just really really rooting for me and and really appreciates me and loves me the way that i cannot see myself i think especially for this pile spirit is asking you to really appreciate these things when people compliment you don't shy away from it don't say no da da da, da. i don't deserve this or whatever don't back away from it spirit is asking you to really embrace whatever compliment you are given, thank them at the very least for them being able to see that in you. Um, that's what I'm getting with the lovers and the queen of wands because the queen of wands is an empowered woman. She's very confident. And with the lovers, we have a sense of completion. So you find completion within yourself. But at the same time, don't be afraid for it to come from outside sources. I know that feels a little bit contradictory, but really focus on like your family, your friends, those that you know would not say things to you just to manipulate you. 
when you get confirmation from somebody, accept it as the universe sending you some a little love note. With the Seven of Coins and the King of Cups. The King of Cups here is your heart. It's your emotions. It's somebody in mastery of their feelings. And with the Seven of Coins, you're very much working on this. And I applaud you for doing this. And you're doing such a great job, Pile One, of being able to see that you are very worthy of all the love and all the... And of all the goodness that the universe has to offer you, your soul is very beautiful and it's very bright. And I can feel that you're going to come into this just this huge radiating aura of hope and love and acceptance and confidence, not just for yourself, but for others. People are going to be very inspired by the things you bring into their life, Pile One. I'm, I'm onto the magician and judgment here. Um, the magician is somebody who has all the tools at their disposal to be able to create their reality, to be able to manifest, to be able to really conjure up whatever it is that they want. And this includes other people as well, to be able to, I don't want to say manipulate, but really shift the energies within their space. So say you have a party, a gathering, instead of going into it thinking, oh, I really hope it doesn't go this way, you're going to be walking in knowing fully and completely that things are going to be fun, joyous, and that they will have very little to minimal uh, negative experiences going on or, you know, the conversation will only be happy and joyous. People have the ability to do this. And I think we see it a lot, especially with like celebrities or big personalities, TV personalities, TV hosts. We see it a lot when they come into a room and they just command a presence and suddenly everybody's having a good time. You yourself are very much capable of this as as well pile one um with judgment here it's a card of to me at least having good morals of knowing when to do something and how to do it i i tend to get justice and judgment a little bit intermingled because with judgment it's more like you have the ultimate power to do this in the rider weight tarot it's depicted as a day of reckoning but here in in the Terror of the Divine, and this is one of the reasons I love it, this is uh, the folk tale of Journey to the West, which heavily inspired Dragon Ball. So if you see the monkey tail and the bow stuff and you're thinking of uh, Kid Goku, um, this is very much where they took that inspiration. And when you think of his character, for those of you who haven't seen the anime, he's a very bright and happy character. He inspires everybody around him, including his enemies. He befriends his enemies because he sees their their power their strength their ability to defeat him as something good it's like wow that's pretty amazing can i learn from you that's his general take on life in general he sees the beauty in everybody and that everybody is worthy of saving um he he, he hesitates to kill a lot of his enemies and it's kind of a thing so you may be this same way you want to befriend everybody you want to be able to see everybody through the lens of love because you know in some way you may be able to shift their perspective maybe it's a perspective that you know is not healthy that is um very negative so you befriend them to make to influence them to maybe see things differently i don't want to say change their mind because we can't always change everybody's mind, right? But we can definitely influence them to see things differently. With the Hermit and the Knight of Swords, you won't be staying a Hermit long. The Knight of Swords is somebody who's always out and about. But it's interesting that they both have this, this is a horse and this is a reindeer, but they're very similar. It's that movement of spirit because white in, uh, at least to me, signifies it's the color of spirit. It's the color of light coming in. So when you're in your hermit mode, you were really gaining this inspiration. Even if you weren't keep uh, closing yourself off from the rest of the world, you were definitely doing it internally. Perhaps um, you weren't speaking as much or you were just very withdrawn. But the truth is you were just getting all this, this psychic download, the psychic, the intuitive knowing of how to go about life, allowing spirit to guide you essentially. Um, with the Knight of Swords, you finally have that purpose. You finally understand what it is 
that you have to do. This is mental work. This is the plan in action, um, as well as the messages that you have received. And what awaits you? I'm not going to lie. Not all of it will be easy. But that's okay because you know at the end of the day you're able to shift these perspectives. You're able to shift the energy and to make everything work out for you. You know the universe is here to, to provide for you. The universe is here to take care of you. Not just have your back but to also provide for you everything you need. And with the two of coins beneath the three of swords it's a give and take of joy and sadness more joy than sadness i know we want to stay more in that joy but especially if you if you're somebody who has suffered a lot in your past know that everything has to be set in balance maybe you had to have that really tragic past in order to have the most vibrant and beautiful future and even if you didn't just know that when the tough times come, you will know how to more smoothly go through them. I remember there was an interview I saw and it was a musician that I really, really liked. I loved his singing, or I still do. Um, but he was critiquing this whole, because I think it is more prevalent now. I don't want to call it a trend because I don't want this to go away, but people are more into meditation. They're more into this really connecting with oneness and being one with the universe and he was criticizing it's like well his argument was why do i want to not feel the pain or to you know not suffer that makes no sense to me why would i want to meditate to make it go away and the truth is you don't make it go away you know how to handle it better it's like there's always going to be rain but you can be prepared with it with a jacket and umbrella and boots or you can walk out there and get wet and either way i don't really want to say that one way is better than the other some people enjoy getting wet you know they enjoy the rain on them um and some people are okay with their suffering like but if they are it's because they don't stay in there it's because they know there's a light at the end of the tunnel and they will not be feeling that forever maybe this is something you're adopting as well pile one It's accepting the balance and knowing that you know how to balance things out in your favor. Because the point here is to not feel like you're out of control. You're definitely in control when you connect with the universe because the universe wants to work with you. This is such a lovely spread. By the way, the more major arcana cards you have, the more powerful your energies are. That's what I've always been told. And I say the same thing for the suits. So you have four major arcana and three suits out of ten cards. And that's pretty wonderful. Bio one. We're going to go into some closing advice and closing messages. And I want to thank you again for uh, being here and clicking on this reading. Um, I think it's been almost a month since I've had this channel. And it's just been such a wonderful adventure. Um, but, I'm continuing, but I'm going to continue doing just because your loving messages... And the confirmations that you have told me are just, they make my day. They really fill my heart with so much love and joy and gratitude. So I want to thank you again for being here. All right, let's get your advice cards. We have from the Work Your Light Oracle, the initiation, rite of passage, crossing the threshold. What's that light at the end of the tunnel I was talking about? Um, let's get one more. The ever unfolding rose cracked open. It's happening for you, not to you. We also have monology, manifestation cards. We have full moon and Capricorn. Take a reality check. You might have full moon and Capricorn or Capricorn placements. Um, the full moon and Capricorn just left us I, a few weeks ago as of the as of the um release of this video so maybe something oh and full moon in cancer <laughs> so something within a six month period is going to be very interesting from now or maybe a few weeks ago up until sometime in late december or early january i feel like this is going to be your most transformative um 
period yet you, or you may be undergoing a lot between then and now and i'm gonna have one goddess guidance oracle card even though we have kuan yin she's already our goddess for this reading we have i hope i pronounced her name right coven coventina and let me cover this up just to be safe purification it's time for a cleansing detoxification of your body and mind so a few things um with purification especially if you are starting your journey your spiritual journey or restarting it because uh it can be in cycles i feel like sometimes we're more spiritual in our lives and others like it may come in years or it may come in months it, it's got a bit of a cyclical nature but what it's asking here is to really just cleanse your energy of any outside energies of anything negative of any residue from past relationship situations or even just the daily grind, you know, just get rid of all the muck that you don't need. Keep whatever is useful. It's usually the positive things or any kind of really powerful statements or feelings. Keep those and get rid of the rest. Um, with the initiation, you're definitely starting this journey. And maybe this is why you click this video. You want to know what's coming up next. You want to know where to go from here. And the truth is, it's in layers the spiritual journey comes in layers for me it was at least oh gosh five waves five definite waves of this and for some of us it's all our lives we've always been super spiritual but it's always been you know in the background and maybe for once you actually want to bring it to the foreground to see exactly why your life is going the way it is with take a reality check and let your fears dissolve it's asking you to stop looking at your fears as something to keep you safe. Because I know that's what fears are for. But don't let them keep you stuck. Don't let them keep you from venturing on into this world. You see the goat here going up the mountains. And I always associate that with an ascending to our highest self, our spiritual self. And then you see the crab here going into waters, really going into the depths of whatever it is that is holding you back, as well as the depths of what is keeping you from growing. Because you probably have, especially with this blue, and there's water in both of these cards. You probably have more, you have more underneath the surface than you're willing to admit. And some of it may not be pretty, but when you come out of it, you're going to be like this unfolding rose in this moon. You're just going to come out looking so different. It may be to the point where people don't even recognize you because of how much you have let go and how much you've decided to grow. Because this is definitely a path you have chosen. And this is all I have for you today, Pile One. Thank you so much for letting me read for you. Again, I appreciate everybody who watches my videos and takes the time to comment on them. Um, your messages mean so much to me. It really, it really just makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing here by allowing me to read for you and give you messages and of wisdom and advice. Um, if you feel free to do so, you can like, comment, and subscribe. And I will be ready for you in the next reading. Bye. Hey there, Pile 2. If you chose the Soapstone Owl and Princess of the Autumn Harvest from the Kuan Yin Oracle, we have your reading here for you today about your spiritual journey. We're going to look at some oracles to see exactly where it is you are and what, you, what it is you may be currently going through. And then I will read up on the Princess of the Autumn Harvest. I am going to point out this is a number 22, which is considered a master number in astrology. Um... It does reduce down to four as well, so you may be a 22, life path 22 or a life path four. Let's get started with the oracles. Oh, we have unicorn, infinite possibilities. You are the sovereign of the seen and unseen worlds. The magic of love surrounds you. Beauty transforms you. Listen to the spirits of light. Abandon the darkness. Go beyond the ordinary and become the legendary. There's also butterflies in here, so I know it's a unicorn, but you get extra animals. And uh, I think... No, those are flowers. I thought they were butterflies in this one too. Right. A theme or a thame? I'm not exactly sure how that's pronounced. Detachment, action, empowerment. Adjustment. Looking back, moving forward. 
The Seven Star Sisters, Birthing Creations, Tapestry of Life, Expression. And the castle. Oh, wow. First of all, there's a lot of gold and yellowish glow to this uh, pile. With the Thame here and even the border of this Princess of the Autumn Harvest. And even the castle, which looks... It, these are pearls and I'm pretty sure those are rhinestones on her eyes, but they look like diamonds. And even this lady herself looks like a diamond. So lots of sparkling energy here, pile two. Um, you have such an elevated sense of connection to spirit because <laughs> um, I'm feeling myself literally just be carried up <laughs> a little bit more, which is very interesting. Um, so you definitely vibrate in the higher chakras in your crown, in the third eye, as well as the throat. I feel like, I don't know, my throat feels a little different. Um, just the numbers before I move on. Uh, 24, so somebody may be 24 or 22. Um, and then 2 plus 4 reduces to 6, so you may be a life path 6 as well, which is funny because pile 1 was also a life path 6. I, I got that from there. And I'm a life path 6, so... Um, and then, for the life of me, I do not know, but XLIII for the castle. I really need to learn my Roman numerals, but regardless, you are breaking away from something that has been holding you back with especially with um this knife here you are cutting cords and maybe looking back but you know that you have to move forward especially with the unicorn here infinite possibilities whatever you have let go has allowed you to it has opened um so much more a multitude of things waiting for you especially here with the seven star sisters i'm getting more friends maybe more of a social life um or perhaps really finding more people that are on the same path as you, Pile 2. With the castle, I'm getting you really setting up your boundaries. But more than that, you are setting up your life. It's almost like you felt trapped in whatever it was that you broke free from. Whatever it was didn't allow you to transform into the person you were going to become. Because... There's an owl. Oh, <laughs> I didn't even notice that. There's an owl here. It's very hard to see, but it actually looks a lot like uh, my little soapstone owl here. So that's wonderful. So owls may be very important to you. Owls also always make me think of Athena, also because this is very close to the name Athena as well. So this may be one of your goddesses, along with Kuan Yin. But you are transforming so rapidly and so... Surely, I feel like you know exactly where it is that you want to go and what you want to do. Because these are cards of somebody who really has their life figured out. Um, with the unicorn and infinite possibilities, I'm just thinking that the sky is the limit for you. There is nothing you cannot do. There's been a huge transformation with these butterflies and the unicorns, but also... Just something magical and unique about you. You are becoming something that is very hard to find, Pile 2. And I think you're aware of that. If not, you will be now. But you're also coming into, uh, I want to say, uh, so much abundance, so much money. And if not money, then at the very least, you're able to take care of yourself, especially here with the castle. You're not a princess in need of saving. This is your castle. You live here, <laughs> you know? It, it's like you're letting people know that Everything that you have earned, that you have worked for, is yours. And nobody else gave that to you. And even if they did, it was probably through something that you did for them. Still, it's considered work. Um, with Princess of the Autumn... Oh, I didn't even realize that. Princess in the Castle. Yeah. Um, you're not a princess in need of saving. <laughs> you have very much saved yourself. You look back with gratitude for everything you've gone through and you move forward knowing that you have the power to move forward. I'm going to read from the Kuan Yin Oracle for Princess of the Autumn Harvest. Um, autumn might be an important season for you. It could be your time of birth, wherever you may live, because I know the seasons are different everywhere. But also autumn is a time of harvest, of really reaping your rewards, reaping everything that you have worked so hard for. So maybe this is coming into money. Through 
the spiritual work you've gone through gone through it's like it's very much that law of attraction you receive what you feel you you've earned you know you've earned way more than you are currently getting or that you have gotten in the past so you are definitely reaping that and it may be a castle it may be a home it may be a house um with pearls here maybe an inheritance it may be something that is going to continue building you wealth into the future i really love this card in the um, archetypes deck the wild unknown archetypes archetypes deck because i know that feeling of finally being able to afford your own place of finding your own place of knowing you can take care of yourself it, it's really transformative and it's interesting how it's always interlinked with our place our feeling of our place in the universe i think it really makes you understand that the law of attraction is very much real um but let me let me go ahead and read before i get distracted again the princess of the autumn harvest brings gifts of bounty and blessings for efforts and actions of the past it is a time when fruit of labors is ripe for the picking a beautiful blessing is on its way to you now this may come in the form of spiritual gifts an opportunity a windfall of abundance a significant relationship or an important friendship and more be open to receive to receive it, knowing it is justly deserved. Yeah, <laughs> essentially what I um, what I said before I looked into these. I really have to start trusting my own the things I I spill out whenever I'm talking because. But yeah, the seven star sisters here. Your sisters, if you have any, may be very important, or your group of uh, friends. Um, this doesn't have to be gender, like they don't have to be actual women. This could also be your brothers or whoever your closest group is and if you don't have one i foresee you getting one in the future or very soon but you may find that they inspire you to do a lot you may end up living with them as well maybe this could be your uh your roommates they just happen to be equally as uh as spiritually connected as you and this really helps you solidify the kind of life you want to live living in this magical realm because i really do feel like you do this but the sense of empowerment i'm getting here combined with this this higher intuition is just so beautiful and so transformative and really whatever it is you get in the future in terms of money gifts um love everything is so well earned and so well deserved pile two all right let's move on to the tarot but yeah, you're you're becoming elevated. You're getting an upgrade in terms of connection to spirit. Um, for you, I'm going to be using the animated movie tarot, which is a very um, Disney-inspired tarot, which actually goes along with the castle. Um, and the princess. So maybe you're a Disney fan. Maybe you like to go to Disney World. Or are you just like fairy tales in general? So we're going to choose both cards. We have the High Priestess. This is beautiful. <laughs> I was getting High Priestess vibes for you. The Lovers. Wow. Pile 1 also has the Lovers. Maybe everybody's getting into some really healthy, <laughs> some really healthy um, spiritual connections here. The Hanged Man. Judgment. Wow, Judgment was in Pile 1 too. Maybe Pile 1 resonated with you as well. You may want to go back to that one. Page of Cups. To clarify the High Priestess, we have Seven of Pentacles. To clarify the Lovers, we have Strength. To clarify the Hanged Man, we have Queen of Cups. Wow. <laughs> to clarify Judgment, Seven of Wands. And to clarify the Page of Cups, Temperance. Yeah, somebody's coming into your life, Pile 2. Um, not that you were looking for anybody, but because you're in a place where you feel like you can really, truly start something, whether that's a family, whether that's an adventure, whether that's just a life with somebody else, um, you feel very open to this. Take that if it resonates. This does not have to be a love reading. I feel like I do too many love readings as it is, but, um, with the High Priestess here, you've definitely worked very hard on your intuition and developing your intuition, your connection with Source, 
really just living walking the talk <laughs> it's one thing to always be talking about being in connection to spirit or to say that you're very spiritual it's another thing to actually do the work to meditate every day to listen to yourself to listen to your gut to your to your intuition and even to your body um i feel like people don't especially with strength here um at least in this particular reading i'm thinking of how the body reacts to how our spirit is our body reacts to how we are emotionally so maybe even taking the time to actually do some exercise maybe do some yoga which is it in my experience the best way of releasing negative energy within the body i know people see it a lot as just stretching but if you take the time to really get into it and this is what helped me a lot with meditation is to stretch the parts of the body that feel the tightest or where you feel like you neglect a lot because that's probably where you store a lot of your negativity within the body um with the lover's card i think this is also if you are open to a relationship whoever you're with is going to be very um very strong if not physically then at the very least internally emotionally and even psychically with the hangman and queen of cups here the hangman here, it says sacrifice and abandonment. I'm not reading these keywords because I'm interpreting them differently, at least this time. Um, that's not always the case, but right now I'm seeing the hangman as the transformation, that shift in perspective, being able to let go of that which does not resonate with you. For, for example, you may have seen something a certain way and you realize that it was holding you back seeing it that way. So you shift that perspective and let that old perspective go and allowing the new one to really really solidify something much more positive for you pile two with the queen of cups empathy and wisdom okay this is the only one i'm going to... some of these are resonating with the keywords here because the high priestess and the queen of cups to me are the most intuitive um, cards of the in the tarot so yeah you're a very highly intuitive person and you're just becoming even more so the key difference is that the Queen of Cups is empathic, is feeling, is nurturing, and the High Priestess. I don't want to say she's cold. It's more like she's very impartial. She can be warm. She can be cold. In the in the right or weight, you see the black and the white chess piece. This is the yin and yang, knowing that your intuition will guide you to say both to understand and say both wonderful things and things that are not so wonderful, things that need, you know, harsh truths that need to be told. With judgment here and the Seven of Wands, in fact, Seven of Pentacles is in some pile one. If you feel like going back to pile one, I highly encourage you to do so, but something tells me, yeah, the judgment card here, you will be letting go of something. And if not letting go, you, you will call it out for what it is. To me, Robin Hood, um, the in general, the, the myth, the legend, whatever you want to call it. I've never really seen the Disney version, but I used to love Robin Hood um, lore. Like I would read all the Robin Hoods that there were out there. He, he takes from the rich and gives to the poor, yes. And I would see this as taking intuition and giving it to those who do not yet know how to tap into their own intuition but i also see this as calling out people for what they are especially with the seven of wands here the seven of wands is it's a very fighting energy it's very much um knowing how to defend yourself and in this case especially because he has the bow and arrow. He may be a Sagittarius um, because this is also giving me very Sagittarius energy, calling out things for what they are or being able to see through the things that people tell you. You know exactly what it is that is in front of you and what isn't. And you're willing to tell people about it, put people in their place. This is where the high priestess comes in, where she is not going to sugarcoat everything. She's going to tell you exactly how things are. And unfortunately, sometimes that means telling people that, hey, what you're doing is not right or what you're doing is um, not for the benefit of everybody. It's only for the benefit of the few. 
especially with taking from the rich, giving to the poor. This may be, these may be people who are trying to keep certain things to themselves and not give to like everybody else. Um, but the truth is you believe everybody isn't, deserves to have a chance at whatever it is that these people are only keeping for themselves. It could be money, it could be intuition, it could be opportunities if it's like a workplace situation. Um, but this is part of your journey, is being able to speak the truth, Pile 2. With the Page of Cups and Temperance here, um, I see some growing up here. <laughs> and, and I don't mean to say that you're childish or that you're immature, I'm saying this to be... You're coming into a full maturity here. It's like the Page of Cups to me. Yeah, they're a bit of a dreamer. They're a bit of a... They wear their heart on their sleeve. But, and it actually resonates with Ariel, if you've seen the movie. She wants to be a part of a certain world, but then she gets there and realizes that she can't walk that well. She's she's wobbling on her, on her legs, so it's something that she has to work hard to really master she can't speak at least at first because she has to go through certain things to be able to get her voice back it's like you understand now that not everything will be easy at first but you're okay with that you're okay with taking the baby steps because you know it's just one day at a time you will slowly but surely get to where you need to be and that's the temperance that's that balancing of your expectation and your reality. <laughs> this is a very lovely reading pile too. Um, but I see so much transformation here. So much love as well. And so much change that you've gone through. I think you really need to um, give yourself a pat on the back for being able to, to go through all of this and grow through it as well have some advice cards to finish off the reading and I want to thank you again for clicking on my video today um, this YouTube journey is so wonderful and all the comments and that I've been getting have just been making my day so if any of this resonates don't hesitate to let me know I love hearing from you guys all right from the Monology Manifestation deck, we have First Quarter Moon in Aries, Step Into Your Power. Yes, this is exactly what you're doing, Pile 2. Um, full Moon in Virgo, Take Inspired Action. Lots of movement here. And it's interesting that both of these ladies here look like they're dancing and moving around. So something tells me you're not going to be staying stuck in one place. We have From the Work Your Life. Oracle boundaries. Where do you need to establish better boundaries? Yeah, I spoke about that with the first set of oracles for you. And share your voice. Come out of the cave. Persecution expression. Yeah, especially with the Little Mermaid I was talking about in the tarot. Um, you're really coming into your voice. It's like you had you had to go through certain things to be able to find it, and now that you have it, people need to hear from you, Kyle, too, because you have a lot of wisdom to offer. And for the goddess guidance, Diana, focused intention. Again, with the uh, with the bow and arrow, you may be a Sagittarius. You may take archery, too. I noticed people who do archery, and I remember back in the day I wanted to do it, but I had no idea how to do or start that. But <laughs> you may do it. You may just be a Sagittarius in general. Um, you may also have Aries placements as well as uh, Virgo. Um with the first quarter moon in Aries, step into your power and take inspired action with the full moon in Virgo. You're not somebody who's going to be, yeah, you're very much a person of action. You are a person who's going to be walking your talk. Again, I said that earlier, but I feel like you know what your higher purpose is now, especially with boundaries. Because you know what your purpose is, you're going to be more strict about the boundaries or at the very least you're going to be laying out the rules a lot more clearly to people about how it is that you want to be treated or not treated 
yeah, this is very direct and you're not going to be afraid to tell them. And you're not going to be received negatively for this either. You're going to be respected, I think is the biggest feeling I'm getting from this because I'm not getting any sense of attack. I'm getting a sense of, okay, she said this very plainly and very clearly. I'm going to respect that because I think people know or they will very soon learn to know that they sh you shouldn't be one to be messed with. With Diana, she is the goddess of the moon. Um, focused intention. Keep your unwavering thoughts, feelings, and actions focused on your target and you will make your mark. Yeah, you're definitely going to be leaving your mark on people and possibly the world in one way or another, pile two. But I'm just loving the movement that I see in these. And in your Konyan card as well, because she looks like she's dancing. This wasn't the dance card in this reading, but they all look like they're moving. You may be a dancer. Or you may, because I was speaking about yoga earlier, you may use your body as a way to express your devotion to spirit, whether that's through yoga or maybe some kind of dance, um, maybe sacred dance, because I know those are important. And also I'm getting kundalini energy because that can really... I always feel it more when I do exercise. Like I will... Like, for example, I do intense... Zumba or I used to belly dance back in the day. I would uh, do my cool down to uh, and then do my do my stretches and cool down. I would just lay there and feel my body my body resonating with all this energy. Um, not like activity energy, just really feeling that kundalini awakening, feeling that chi, that ki, whatever you want to call it, the energy just flowing within me, and it was really really beautiful. You may also be experiencing something similar to this pile too um, and I advise you to take that moment especially after a cool down from any kind of workout or activity to appreciate your body just humming with the universe and thriving but this is all I have for you today pile two thank you so much for letting me read for you I hope and uh, a lot of this resonated because it's all good stuff um, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you in the next reading. Bye! Hey there, Pio3! If you chose the Shining Lotus from the Kuan Yin Oracle deck and this cute little fluoride elephant, um, we have a reading here for you today. Shining Lotus 26. You may be 26, um, or you could be a life path 8, because 2 plus 6 reduces to 8 in numerology. But we're going to start with some oracles to see where exactly do you, you are on your spiritual journey. I'm going to start with, ooh, owl, magic. Choose to know the truth because you can. Open your inner vision. You can see through deception. Let the past go and make room for a better life. Rise up. Magic and wisdom are your birthright. I think it was pile two that had the, uh, yeah, it was pile two with the owl. So if you felt called to that, I would, uh, I would go back and watch that reading. <laughs> crystals, quartz, restoration, healing, harmony. And I actually have a lot of quartz here. I don't know if you can see it. It's not in the frame, but I have like this big old chunky quartz. It actually looks just like this card. I found it in storage the other day, so it's the first time being in a reading. A new earth, it's happening. Keep holding the vision. Precognition, psychic ability, future vision. That's awesome. And the venom. All right, my beautiful pile three. You have the most colors out of all the readings. So, well, of all the readings, because it's the last reading. But you're a very magical person, and I can already tell just because the psychic ability, future vision, uh, well, quartz is interesting. To me, it's... it's the crystal that can embody any other crystal and I feel like that's what makes it the most powerful. It's also very abundant. I think it's one of the more prevalent crystals out there because where I live, certain parts of the area, you'll find it in the ground. Um, just, you know, not having been mined out yet, you'll find it in the ground. And it's very amplifying. It's You can use it for essentially anything. Maybe you feel really drawn to uh, clear quartz. I know I am. I it, if I have to choose, it's always a clear quartz crystal that I go for. 
Um, and also the turtle from Pile 1 was uh, Clear Quartz, so maybe you recall to that as well. Interesting. You may have just decided to watch this entire reading, and that's fine, because it's rather short. And also because uh, all of these have been rather interconnected. With a new earth, I feel you're coming into a whole new life that you were not expecting, Pile 3. Your, your ability to see the truth and to see the future gives you an advantage above a lot of people. And I feel like your overall life is just going to be improving so much. With the Venom here, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't worry about this. What I feel is like you have come out of this Venom, and I think that's why I put it the last and why it was here on the bottom. It's like, because you see the moons here, there's a very tiny half moon here under the venom in the venom card as well as like teeth and all kinds of scary looking things but look how interesting this is it's very similar to the quartz card and that it has a lot of colors surrounding it it's almost like you decided to put a crystal there and suddenly the venom has gone you have found a way to release that which is holding you back whatever this venom is or to get rid of something that has just been toxic in your life in general pile three it's almost like you've healed yourself through a psychic ability. Maybe it's through this healing that you were able to come into it. Um, if you don't have a psychic, a psychic ability, something tells me you will in the future. You will definitely develop that very strong intuition, being able to make decisions that just make more sense. Um, is a number 13 in which in some places they actually consider lucky i know we like to think of 13 as an unlucky number at least where i'm from because of uh, friday the 13th and whatever but it's actually a very lucky number it's considered a goddess number in uh i can't remember where but i'm pretty sure if you google it you'll find that 13 can be a very lucky number a very venusian number as well and then one plus three reduces to four in numerology so you may be a life path four um, you could also have started this journey at 13 because I know a lot of people started rather young but really don't come into it until they reach you know adulthood once puberty has settled down <laughs> um, you may also be 26 I'm not sure if I've already said that but let me read a little bit about the shining lotus from the Kuan Yin Oracle Interesting. I chose the I bookmarked the wrong reading. I got the dance unveiling, which is interesting. So you may be a dancer, or used to dancing it in the past. But twenty six shining lotus. There are times when it makes sense to be discreet until you find your inner strength, so that you feel empowered enough to share your thoughts, feelings, and beliefs without wavering, even in the face of challenge by another. At other times, we benefit ourselves and others by taking a risk and allowing the inner lotus blossom of our true self to shine forth for all to behold. So once you come into the psychic ability, and I know this because this is something that I sometimes struggle with, you may not know when to be able to tell people this. Um, there's a bit of hesitancy here. It's like you go on and off from being confident in your power to not being confident in your power. And I feel like that resonates with what I just read from The Shining Lotus. You may not know when and where to use this. You may not know whom to tell or whom not to tell. And the truth is, I would just say, don't tell anybody unless um, they ask, unless it's somebody that is very close to you. And even then, um, I, I know there's, we don't like to be kept in the spiritual closet it's especially for certain people who just really, really love to be in the joy of their power because being able to express it freely allows us to be even more in tune and more intuitive. But I think I think Spirit Heal here is trying to tell you to be aware of the people who would not be so kind to you if they knew this. I think that's another way of reading the venom here in this particular spread. You're coming into this new earth, but be aware that Anything can happen in a minute. 
You may also be a light worker. I'm seeing the light coming from her arm, um, from her hands, and the same thing in the shining lotus. You see her hands very prominently. Your hands may be the way you heal, or you may just have very beautiful hands. What else can I get from the owl? Owls are very magical. Um, I reson they resonate with the goddess Athena, and I think I brought up Athena in another reading. Again, if you feel inclined to do so, just watch all of these because I feel they all have something very powerful to let you know, pile three. Um, another way of reading this is to know when to tell the truth and when not to tell the truth. Because sometimes people can't handle it. Sometimes people don't like it when people see through them and they figure them out. I've, I've had to deal a lot with a lot of this myself. You know when you go into a work situation and somebody is not being completely honest or they're putting themselves in a better light than they actually are or taking credit for work that they did not do. Using this psychic ability to know when and when to use this, it's it's almost like you have to weaponize it and that would make sense because Athena is the goddess of war or strategy. So strategy in general, being able to be methodical with the way you use your abilities is going to really allow you to step into your power and to create something more more beneficial to you pile three all right let's move on to the tarot to see what else it is that awaits you on your spiritual journey but so far i can tell you're very no nonsense and very uh clear cut because my energy shifted entirely from the last two readings I did. I also feel like you work more in the corporate world or at the very least somewhere where there's an office and people have to come together to uh, to work with each other. Maybe that's why the venom is popping out because sometimes these workplaces aren't the best, unfortunately. <laughs> but somehow I feel like that only allows your psychic ability to flourish because you're able to put it to more use and therefore exercise it. So at the very least, see the positive in that. So we're going to be using the Modern Witch Tarot for you. And I'm going to have to, I might have to stop using it. I don't want to because there's so much nudity in it. And there's nothing, I have nothing against nudity. This is a YouTube thing. Or I may have to end up using this for um, private meetings. So we have the Three of Pentacles. Yeah, I was talking about the workplace, and here we have the Three of Pentacles. We have Death. We have Strength. King of Wands. Three of Cups. And then underneath the Three of Pentacles, to clarify, we have the Four of Cups. We have the Page of Pentacles, we have Eight of Cups, Judgment. Judgment has been in every single reading, which is very interesting. Lots of transformative uh, opportunities and qualities are coming for everybody who clicks this reading, that's for sure, and that's wonderful. Um, but I like that this is the deck I have that most resembles the Rider Waite because I've been referencing it a lot as well. So there's something about going back to basics that is coming up for everybody not just pile three so if you came from another pile and just happen to be in this pile i need you to understand that as well but let's start over here with the three of pentacles there is something about your work situation that is going to be shifted and it's interesting that it's the only one i've needed to censor i feel like that's important as well because um underneath this is a this is an artist uh doing a sketch of a nude model just like you do in art school I feel like there is something that is forcing you to really hide yourself, pile three. Um, because she's also not a conventional looking person. So whatever it is that is forcing you to really go into hiding, it could be your psychic ability, it could be just the way you are. You've, you're over it. I love how her hoodie says over it. I'm not sure if you can see, but she's got this hoodie that says over it. You're kind of done with this stagnant energy, with whatever it is that is really lowering your vibration because you're a very high vibrating individual the fact that your work situation is forcing you to really come down to their level 
I almost see this lady as like a manager or something who's just like always watching you when you don't need to be watched because you know exactly what it is that you're doing. I don't feel like you're somebody who is new to whatever it is that you do. I feel so much confidence from you that whatever you do for your line of work, your current line of work anyway, you don't need to be babysat. You, you, uh, you're very much aware of what it is you have to offer with the death here. This is not a death of anything. It's more transformation. Maybe the death of your old career because you know it's no longer for you, but definitely a transformation here. I love that there's a flower on this little flag that death is bringing about. It's almost like a call for peace. Um, with the Page of Pentacles, you're starting something new. You're starting something much more fruitful and lucrative. This is, to me, planting the seeds of something that is going to be so much healthier for you in the long run and a lot more beneficial, if not financially, at the very least for your soul. Your soul is asking you to really do something that is going to to make you feel alive again because maybe you do feel dead at work. <laughs> maybe you're like, this poor person under this floor is just like, I'm dead here. I don't want to be here anymore. I don't feel alive in my work situation and it doesn't have to be work you could really re um, replace anything else that goes within this but because again i have a very strong feeling of working in a corporation or in an office somewhere where there's a lot of uh where you have to watch yourself and what you say or what you do which is hard for you because you're a very authentic person and you can see through a lot um pile three with strength you're a very strong individual and I do not know how you put up with really keeping yourself very rigid. And now my back is hurting, so I don't know what you do. Maybe it's causing you to hurt your back. And whether that's because it's labor-intensive work or because maybe you're hunched over a computer all day or maybe you are an artist. Maybe your line, you do work in an office, but you happen to be in the creative setting. Maybe this is also <laughs> causing you to break your back, um, quite literally but you gain strength by leaving this you're already very strong but yeah you need to leave something behind in order to find something better to go on move on to higher pastures and we also like hiking by the way because <laughs> i know she's a hiker and this girl also gives me hiking vibes like she found something foraging maybe you like to forage <laughs> um with the king of wands and judgment, you're becoming your own boss here. I see this as you. You could see it as your boss finally meeting their day of judgment, but I'm seeing this more as you coming into your power to break off from whatever it is that you, that you no longer need. Like, I, whatever you're leaving, you don't need it anymore. And it may feel not mean it may not feel that way maybe you do make really good money wherever it is that you are but the truth is you may be set free once you i'm just getting the download that whatever you want to pursue in the future is going to bring you just as much if not more money so it's nothing you have to worry about i don't know why it's coming in so strongly but maybe this is a reason for you to stay there is the the security that a job like that gives you with the three of cups and the queen of swords you're ready to party and it's very interesting that some of these girls are wearing similar um outfits the queen is wearing like this sheer blouse and this bustier kind of looking thing and then these heels and then this girl looks like that so you're coming out of your party college days and you're going to start really <laughs> setting your own trail it's also interesting how they're all facing i'm gonna block this i just realized some of these are kind of considered nude yeah someone tells me you're done with being censored <laughs> um but back to the queen of swords and the three of cups i feel like you did have a lot of fun at work and you're go definitely going to keep some friends but it's time to look forward. It's time to look towards the future. All these cards have been looking back to your old job, but you have the mental capacity to be able to bring something new into fruition. You have more than enough wisdom, more than enough knowledge to build whatever it is that you want to build. 
into your future. And something tells me you also have the money. It'll come in somehow. I'm not sure how, but gold is very prominent in this particular spread. Also, I just brought up the honey cow site, which is a, it's a crystal of abundance and joy, at least to me. Um, but yeah, it's time for you to move forward, pile three. And also, I just really love your energy. You feel so well put together. And I feel like if you're hesitating on anything, it's because you know what it is you're leaving behind. But I think that's just what makes you even more intelligent. It's just knowing that you are leaving something behind, but you're going to be creating something even better. So step forward into this journey, into this next phase of your life. I know we were talking about spiritual journey, but really I'm feeling more you're creating you're co-creating something with this spirituality that you undeniably have pile three and you're gonna have a lot more fun in the future <laughs> you'll have a lot more fun doing it all right let's get some advice cards for you i'd like to know what it is that you do for your job i'm just curious because it just feels I don't know, you feel like you're very in control. You might be in a very high position. You might be a manager yourself. Or a very or a position that's very lucky. Like people may tell you, oh, you're so lucky to have that, but they don't know the truth of it. <laughs> Alright, so we have some monology manifestation cards. You have full moon in Aries, cool your emotions, and first quarter moon in Scorpio, release your blocks. Warp your light oracle. We have Break the chain, ancestral patterns, healing, rewriting the future, and awakening, energetic upgrades, a new way of being, integration. You're just coming to all this new energy. I think especially once you leave behind whatever it is that you're leaving, you're just going to flourish. And then we have a goddess card, Ixche. Ichi? I forgot how to pronounce her name. Your name might be Michelle, by the way. Or Nichelle, Michelle, like any of those variations of that name. A medicine woman. You are a channel for divine healing power. I wouldn't be surprised if the whatever you do in the future once you leave behind this current job is something very spiritually based. You may be an actual medicine woman. Maybe you deal with holistic remedies of some sort. Um... You may be of Mexican descent, because I know each child is uh, Aztec or Mayan. Either way. Or you may be from Central and Latin America. <clears throat> Excuse me. Also something to do with your throat chakra, because this is a blue card, and I see a lot of blue here. You may suddenly find yourself losing your voice once you start this. Not your actual, well, maybe your actual voice. But... You will regain it the further you go along. Um, it's just going to be like a slight waver in your footing. Like you may not know exactly what it is you're doing at first because it's so different from what it, whatever it was you used to do. But that confidence will never waver. I feel like that confidence will still very much be there. With full moon and Aries, cool your emotions. I feel like that's going to happen regardless. It may be that your current situation has really left you in a very emotional state like maybe you're quick to anger quick to get frustrated quick to judge yourself or others but i see you releasing that this is one of the blocks that you have with first quarter moon and scorpio um interesting that there's a lot of mars energy here which makes sense that's kind of what i've been feeling this entire pile is a lot of uh a lot of controlled energy and that's something Mars is very much about control action and uh, and movement with break the chain ancestral patterns healing rewriting the future it's the second time I repeated that there is an ancestral pattern here a family history of doing certain things you're going to be healing that and perhaps this block in your career or moving forward with your spiritual journey has to do with the family maybe you come from a long line of medicine women and they were not always able to create a life this way. Maybe they had to hide it. Or maybe they they tried to make a business out of it, but something stopped them, whether that was, you know, 
whatever patriarchal powers there were out there, whether it's the church, their husbands, what have you, the, the neighborhood, um, or you kept it very hush-hush. And because something tells me this is why you're very much in your power pile three for the women in your past life or for anybody in in your past in your family history for the women in your family history or even past life i did say that <laughs> um who were not able to do so we're able we're given a voice and we're given all these possibilities all this freedom we take it for granted really that not even just a few generations ago the people whether it's the women or the people in your life, if you come from like certain backgrounds that were very much uh, persecuted or discriminated against, we've come so far. They did not go through all those fights for us to stay small. And I think in really appreciating it and realizing this, you have broken that chain. And it cannot go back. Uh, maybe you, this is something you realized in your awakening. But regardless, you're stepping even more into your power once you leave behind the things that are no longer in your truth, that are no longer resonating with you. Because you have so much more to offer the world than whatever it is you're offering at this place that doesn't allow you to be your true self, which is this magical, wonderful, healing person. And you're kind of badass as well, because um, when you combine that Mars energy with healing, you get... You get, uh, I'm, I'm getting, oh, my video game stuff is coming through, uh, the White Mage from Final Fantasy. If you don't know what that is, um, it's specifically from Final Fantasy 2, which is going to be even more specific, and even those of you who play Final Fantasy may not understand it. But this is somebody who is a warrior as much as they are a healer. They can both fight and they can heal. They can both take on certain energies but know how to mend them as well and it's funny because i feel like i spoke about something similar to that in pile one but we're breaking that chain of this it's either hurt or heal you understand that you can do both that we will get hurt and that we will heal that we will heal and we'll get hurt again it's a balance um and your ability to do both of these not hurt people. I'm not saying you're going to go out of your way to hurt people in general, but you're going to allow yourself to feel pain, to understand that pain so that you can better heal it. But mostly I see a spiritual warrior here, and I don't like that, um, that analogy because it's kind of weird, but at the same time, yeah. But yeah, you are a healer. Regardless of whatever energy it is that you give off, regardless of what it is that you did in the past, you are here to heal both yourself and other people and the patterns of your past and the patterns of your ancestors. I would also pay attention to your dreams because both, she looks like she's sleeping and she's very much in dream world, but this woman also has her eyes closed. It's almost like you connect with the divine in your dreams so i would pay attention to any interesting or specific imagery that comes through in your dreams and that is all i have for you today pio 3 thank you so much for letting me read for you you have such amazing energy and i i hope some of that rubs off on me because you feel very confident in your power um if you enjoyed this feel free to like comment and subscribe i love reading your comments and i will see you in the next reading bye